Buongiorno. We saw before how there are delays within physical logic gates. This means that inputs do not immediately translate to correct outputs. In this video, we'll see how to compute the total delay through a series of gates. Here's an example of a logic circuit. This one happens to be a full adder, but our main focus is not the circuit's function, but instead how long it takes for the correct output to be achieved. We know that every gate and every wire has a propagation delay. We also know that downstream gates, like this OR gate, must wait for inputs from upstream gates, like this AND gate, and before that, this exclusive OR gate. Therefore, gates placed in sequence lead to compounding propagation delays. This means that the delays add on to each other. Keep in mind that, as long as power is connected to chips, the output signals will always have some value, either 0 or 1, but it may not be the correct value. To guarantee that we have correct values, we must read them after enough time has elapsed since the inputs changed. The minimum time is the circuit's overall propagation delay. What is the cause of the delay through each gate? Let's use a simple NOT gate to explain. Here we see output Y responding to input A. Y is always the complement of A, except during these brief transition times. A small part of the delay comes from the incoming rise time. A switch is flipped that causes input A to jump from low to high. It takes a small amount of time for the power supply electrons to pass through wires and build up enough voltage to act as a high signal. A larger part of the delay comes from the NOT gate's internal fall time. As you can see in the data sheets, there are numerous resistors inside the gate that slow down the movement of electrons. Also, there are transistors that need to charge or discharge to redirect current. This is why I show the Y fall time as taking longer than the A rise time. Two symbols are defined here, TPHL and TPLH. These are both propagation times, which is the meaning of TP. One of them is for the output changing from high to low, that's TPHL. The other is for the output changing from low to high, that's TPLH. These are measured from the 50% point of the changing input limb to the 50% point of the resulting output limb. TPHL is usually longer than TPLH by a small amount. You can read both of these switching characteristics straight from data sheets. When we try to estimate total propagation delay in a circuit, there are a number of complications that lead us to make assumptions. This is why I said we try to estimate rather than compute. We're only getting an approximate number. The first complication is that TPLH is not equal to TPHL. High to low takes longer. But we will assume that they are equal. Second, all inputs are not created equal. Sometimes a gate responds slower to changes in one input than another. We will assume that all inputs have the same effect. Third, the more fan out of a signal, the longer the delay. Fan out is illustrated in this image below. It is the number of signal drains from a single chip. This example has two gates sending signals to three destinations, which could be other gates or output lamps. If we had more and more destination signals, the propagation delay would increase for all of these gates. Fourth, the longer the wires we use, the longer the delay. This effect is usually small. The rule of thumb is that delay increases by one nanosecond for every foot of wire. We will assume that these last two complications have no impact. Those are a lot of assumptions, right? We could add even more to the list. The point I want to reemphasize is that the upcoming procedure gives us an approximation and not a firm number. So here we have a full adder logic circuit. I've labeled these internal wires X, Y, and Z to aid in our analysis. We will assume these delays through each of the gates. 
These numbers were taken from the maximum gate delays in the table shown in the data sheet video. Our goal is to compute the overall propagation delay. To analyze the delays, we will use this timing diagram. The input signals are given to us and assumed to change at the same time, here at time 20 nanoseconds. We will then work our way through the circuit from left to right or upstream to downstream and draw the waveform for each signal. The first signal is X coming out of the first exclusive OR gate. The table tells us that this gate has a delay of 20 nanoseconds. So 20 nanoseconds after the inputs change, the output changes. This is why X changes at time 40 nanoseconds. But why does it have these specific values of zeros and ones? Well, because it is the exclusive OR of inputs A and B. At the start, A and B are both high, so the output must be low. Then, when A drops low, the output should change to high. This does occur, but only after a delay. The next signal is Y, coming out of the AND gate. At the start, A and B are both high, which makes the AND gate output high. Then A drops low, so Y must drop low. This occurs with a delay of 10 nanoseconds. So we see Y drop low at time 30 nanoseconds. Now we move to the next layer of gates. We'll look at signal Z leaving the second AND gate. Note that the inputs are CN and X. At least one of those inputs are low for the first half of the timing diagram. Therefore, Z is low. Then at time 40 nanoseconds, both of these inputs are high. Z must then jump high, but it does so after a delay of 10 nanoseconds, taking us to time 50 nanoseconds. Signal S is the output of this exclusive OR gate, with inputs X and CN. At first, those inputs are low, so S starts low. Then CN jumps high. This causes S to jump high 20 nanoseconds later. But then X jumps high, which causes CN to drop low, again 20 nanoseconds later. This is a very interesting waveform to consider. The S output actually starts and ends at the same value. But in the middle, due to values changing within the circuit, it temporarily holds an incorrect value. This is a great illustration of why we must wait long enough before reading any output values. The final signal is C out. It is the output of this OR gate with inputs Y and Z. Just like S, it starts and ends at the same value with a temporary blip in the middle. Only after Z settles on its final value, plus a 15 nanosecond delay, does C out hold steady on its final value. For the overall delay, remember that we must compute this from the point when the inputs change, which here is time 20 nanoseconds. Output signal S requires 40 nanoseconds before it reaches its final value, and C out requires 45 nanoseconds. The overall propagation delay is the larger of these two, so 45 nanoseconds. Any time we use this full adder circuit, we should wait at least 45 nanoseconds before reading the output values. The timing diagram is an excellent tool for seeing how the propagation delays work their way through the circuit. However, it takes a long time to use. A quicker way is to write the compounding delays over the top of the circuit diagram, as demonstrated here. First, I fill in the assumed delays for each gate taken straight from the given information. Then I work left to right. The starting delays for the inputs are 0 nanoseconds. Then for every gate I encounter from here on out, I add the gate delay to the largest input delay. The first couple are trivial. The input delay for this exclusive OR is 0. I add that to 20 through the gate, and the result is 20 nanoseconds. The input delay for this AND is 0. I add that to 10 through the gate, and the result is 10 nanoseconds. 
Now it gets interesting. For this exclusive OR gate, the two input delays are 20 and 0. I take the largest of these, 20, and add that to 20 through the gate. The result is 40 nanoseconds. For this AND gate, the two input delays are 20 and 0. I add the starting 20 to the 10 through the gate. The result is 30 nanoseconds. Now for the final OR gate. The two input delays are 30 and 10. I take the largest of these, 30, and add that to 15 through the gate. The result is 45 nanoseconds. These are the same output signal delays computed on the previous slide. So we have confidence that this quicker approach works. This will work for any gate level logic circuit. In the next video, we will see how to handle circuit devices.